Author J.D. Vance wrote about the disaffection felt by the country's working class in Hillbilly Elegy, a memoir of a family and culture in crisis. Vance is also a CNN contributor, and he joins us now from our Washington bureau. J.D., good morning. Good morning. You know, the Anti-Defamation League called this the largest demonstration of white supremacists in decades. What do you think is driving this? Well, I, I think that, un unfortunately, we have a rise in identity politics in the United States. And a lot of the folks who are most attracted to this stuff are middle class uh, guys who come from relatively well to do circumstances. And so it's difficult to really say that there's a single thing that's driving it. Uh, I, I just think that what we're seeing is a lot of disaffected people who are turning to the very worst ways to solve and address that disaffection. And it's something we've got to deal with, quite but, obviously. But is it driven by the economic insecurity that you wrote about in your book? Yeah, I, I really don't think so. And, and one of the interesting things that I discovered just when I was doing research for the book and trying to understand the different strains of, of, of resentment that were out there is that the alt-right movement, this neo-Nazi movement, is actually really driven by well-to-do middle-class folks, people who have a good education. In some ways, that's perfectly highlighted by the organizer of the rally yesterday who went to the University of Virginia, one of the nation's great mm -hmm. universities. So it, it, it's, it's very tempting, I think, and comforting to try to stereotype these white nationalists as a bunch of knuckle-dragging, slack-jawed yokels. But the truth is that these are kids who are doing pretty well and are still attracted to this stuff. And I think that's a more troubling truth, but it is the truth. I still don't understand why they're attracted. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I struggle to understand it myself, Charlie. The, the, the things that you notice that, that run pretty commonly through these folks is that they're not doing especially well in one facet of life or another. They have relationship problems. They don't do especially well with women. The thing that, that struck, jumped out at me about Mr. Fields, the attacker in Charlottesville, is that he appeared to be a washout from the Army. So these are definitely people who have problems in their lives, but a lot of people have problems in their lives, and they don't necessarily turn to white supremacism Mm -hmm. And I think that, that, that means that, one, we should be aware of what's out there, but we should also not excuse and say, yeah, this guy has a problem in his life, so that justifies some of the things that he's, he's, he's turning to. Are they Trump supporters, and how much what percentage of Trump supporters are they? Well, yes, yeah, some of them are obviously Trump supporters, and you could see that in, in the video that went viral of David Duke chanting that he was a Trump supporter. Uh, but I, I really do think that this is a small segment of those who support President Trump. And I, I think that's, that's something that's important to keep in mind, is that if we want to defeat things like this, we really have to find something about our common shared purpose as Americans. And if we look at the entire swath of Trump voters and say, you guys are neo-Nazi supporters, then I think we're going to be destroying some of the real cultural and social capital we need to unite as a country and actually defeat this stuff. J.D., from, from your vantage point right now, what should the president be doing? Well, I, I think it is really important for the president to name this particular phenomenon. If you think about all of the controversy about whether Barack Obama said radical Islamic terrorism, there is a real human need for people to have their enemies named and described by their political leaders. And I think the president really missed an opportunity over the weekend, hopefully an opportunity he will take advantage of today to name this enemy, to describe it, and then to tell the country what we need to do to defeat it. You know, it was interesting to hear uh, President Obama uh, tweeting on this issue because he is, you know, he is kind of pulled back from the debate, but, but quoting Nelson Mandela, that people are not born to hate, that, that people must learn to hate. And if they can learn to hate, they can also be taught to love. Sure. Well, do, go ahead, J.D., go ahead. Well, yeah, and, and, and if you look at some of the responses to Charlottesville, it, it's always the silver lining in tragedies like this is that people come together, they say the right things, they support and love one another. And when I look at what happened in response to Charlottesville, obviously the attack was terrible, but you actually see a community coming together, people of all races and political affiliations coming together to denounce this stuff and to figure out what we're going to do next. Some people make the point that uh, the President Obama, you know, could not bring himself to criticize fundamental radical Islamic extremism. Uh, and, and now we're asking President Trump uh, to do something against a, a groups that we know are, uh, represent everything that America doesn't. 
Yeah, that, that's absolutely right. And it goes back to this point that, you know, we, we have a president of the United States who isn't just a political leader. They're also a, a moral leader in some ways. And people want to know who is the enemy, what are they about, and what are we really fighting for? And I think that to, to have that conversation, you've got to name it. That was true in 2016, 2015 with President Obama. And I think it's true today with President Trump. Thank you, J.D. Yeah. Jane, Thank you, guys. Nice to have you. Thank you so much. Good to talk to you.